And I think we're live, except on LinkedIn, because LinkedIn says, well, I'm not approved to go live. But this is going to be a very special show. There may be glitches. So you can just use the word, the hashtag, hashtag glitch happens. There may be glitches. There may be some things that I'm going to learn along the way, because we have a variety of guests in the show, starting with Simon Lau from Otter. You want to say hello, Hi, Simon? I'm, I'm, Lau from, I'm the VP of product at Otter.ai. Nice to meet all of you. So we're going to talk about a variety of things, accessibility things. The main thing is to help you get your videos, get your message out in front of a lot more people and primarily using accessibility apps. And Simon and I, we're going to get into that conversation a bit because I know that's a passion of yours, but it's a variety of things. It's accessibility app. It's also an app to just get more visible. So you'll see Craig right underneath Simon. He is the founder of Clipscribe. If you want to say hello, Craig. Hello, how are you guys doing? Good to be here. So he'll talk a little bit about his software. It's slightly different than Otter. You might be familiar with Otter, you might not, or otter.ai, I should always uh, say that, which is primarily a transcription software, whereas Craig has this really cool software, I've been using it for the past year, that will transcribe your videos after they're done and create captions for them that grab people's attention. So again, it's a little bit different, but it's still in the realm of uh, communication. And then we have Meryl Evans over here on, I guess, my left, your right. Um, and Meryl is deaf. So I'm going to try and make sure I'm using my lips properly so she can read my lips, which she is very, very good at. Aloha, Meryl. Say hi. <laughs> and then, and so I may be typing some things and that will just be me communicating with Meryl. We're also going to pull up a transcription software, which is live transcription from Otter AI. So you're going to see that on the screen as well. We also have, and there's actually another person in the green room. I'm gonna pull her up from Otter as well, but let me introduce Farhan. He has created a software, and I think I'm gonna let you tell us what you've created, Farhan, because I learned it first this past Monday in the wellness room in Clubhouse. Uh, invited by Jeremiah Alyang. And I'm so glad I joined that because I thought you are perfect for this conversation because we're talking about communicating and getting your message out to more people, whether they're deaf, whether they're hard of hearing, or they just, again, for everyone else here, sometimes we're scrolling and we're not listening. Uh, the other thing too is just accentuating. Like some of these people now the, uh, the, the general population are wearing masks and they're realizing I have a hearing issue and your product uh, solves a little bit of that, about that. So uh, welcome Farhan and just briefly say what you do so that when we uh, get to your segment, people will know. Sure, thank you so much for having me on. And no, the, that room was a lot of fun. <clears throat> uh, we at Concha, I'm an uh, iOS engineer by training, but you know, in a, in a startup you wear multiple hats. Um, and so what I work on is mainly this new hearing aid har hardware, uh, but then also building out kind of a platform where if you do uh, think you have hearing loss, you can quickly download this app, uh, diagnose yourself, uh, and then order it straight you know, from our website and it gets delivered to you. So that eliminates kind of the need to go to an audiologist, uh, to go through any kind of cumbersome process. Uh, and, and more than that, our, our technology is pretty advanced and we're, we're trying to basically help people get diagnosed with hearing loss much early. What we've kind of seen is people have a slight ego. You know, they don't want to go in and admit that they, have, uh, they might have some issues hearing other people. Uh, and so they put it off and put it off, but we're, we're trying to basically get the pipeline in earlier and uh, also make it a lot affordable because right now a, a top of the line hearing aid costs anywhere from 5,000 to $10,000. And we just don't think that's right. So we're selling them for almost four or 500 to $800. Um, and we're taking accepting beta testers. So if you go to our website today and you're uh, kind of in the Bay Area, we'll be we'd love to ship you uh, a pair of these, uh, or just one if you if you only have hearing loss in one year, uh, and and help you hear again and live life to the max. That's fantastic. And what's your website? Uh, Conchalabs.com. So it's as part of my name here. If you just yeah. Yep. Conchalabs.com. Yep. Right. And then feel free to put it in the comments and we'll bring that up on the screen as well. Right now we're Sweet. using StreamYard.VIP uh, to stream to three or more platforms. I think LinkedIn doesn't look like it's working. So it looks like we are on YouTube and Facebook. So if you want to type in the comments uh, where you're joining in from, whether it's Facebook or um, 
YouTube. And then we also have Craig Lillard. Uh, I popped you out of the room so that you can reset your audio. Um, but I'm going to go over to Simon uh, Lau first because you and I have been talking about Otter and we were going to do an interview in person because you're also here in San Diego, I believe. I know California. Um, and then all of a sudden March happened. So we've been putting off this in-person interview. And now I thought, well, why not just bring you on and uh, we'll do a virtual meeting. So we actually had his software being utilized. So tell us a little bit about that, Simon, and then I'll pull that up to use that uh, as well. Yeah, Deb, very nice to meet you. First time here, and thank you for inviting me to the show. Um, yeah, so my name is Simon Lau. I'm the VP of product at Otter.ai. Um, Otter.ai is first and foremost a, um, a meeting transcription application that helps businesses, schools, and um, any type of organization to take notes for meetings, uh, lectures, interviews, and any type of multi-person conversation. Um, our key feature is this live transcription, being able to transcribe your Zoom meetings, be able to transcribe in-person meetings, et cetera. So we really didn't set out to um, create an application for uh, accessibility um, as the primary use case. Um, but sure enough, um, when we put out the application on App Store, Google Play, and on the web, the deaf and hard of hearing community has found us. And they, are, they have been engaging with us and tell us, hey, this is how you can improve the app. You, we need larger fonts. We need different font sizes, different colors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Meryl, uh, whom you have already met on this panel, um, I've talked to her a few times over Twitter and learned a ton from her. Um, so I felt a, a personal conviction. I set a goal for myself that you know this year, um, I want to continue to reach out to the deaf and hard of hearing community and, and try to uh, put our product uh, into use and to benefit the lives of um, really anybody who have accessibility needs. Um, so we're still learning. Uh, even though this is not our primary use case, we, are, we feel very proud that we're making an impact in uh, improving people's lives. And in the pandemic situation right now, where now every all the meetings are virtual meetings, it makes it even harder for the, the community to be able to read lips in these small little squares. So we find that it's very helpful to be using it as an assistive tool, uh, assistive tool for deaf and hard of hearing community. Right, and, and I'm going to type in here. Um, okay, so for Meryl, I'm going to comment here, pull this up so that way she can see my question. And then we're gonna go to Meryl. Okay. and hear what you have to say um, about using some of these apps. So this app uh, uh, we are help to people who are deaf and hard of hearing and even people who don't have any kind of hearing challenges because uh, we're still inundated, we're still in down in videos, that people want to read rather than listen. And I think that COVID, it forced me to try video calls again. I thought mm -hmm. um, I had tried video calls two years ago, three years ago, when my daughter was in Southeast Asia and now, and the experience is terrible. I mean, yeah, even with the bad network connection, but I did try it when we're somebody in the US. And there was so much delay, so much inaccuracy, so much freezing, mm -hmm. and it was just a difficult and awkward experience. Mm -hmm. And then when COVID happened, I needed a way to talk to people because you can't go see people in person. Mm -hmm. So I thought that a friend of mine that I worked with, she did that. At, we had a meeting, a team meeting, and she said, I found a way we can caption it. And I said, sure, we'll give it a try. And it was great. And after that happened, that's when I set out to create that blog post that introduced me to Simon, <laughs> where we talked about all the different applications, like Auto, like um, Google Me, like PowerPoint add-in, and so on. So it's been an adventure. Yeah. 
So um, I've typed in the next question. I want to okay. ask you, what are some of the apps that you use to hear what's being said in Zoom meetings? So I don't think a lot of people have thought about the fact that we're having all of these Zoom meetings, but it's leaving out a large population of people who are deaf and hard of hearing. So Meryl, what are some of the apps that you use? Some of the apps that, well, um, I, I use multiple apps. That's why I never recommend one particular app because you know technology likes to break on us at the worst mm -hmm. of time, right? Yep. So I use multiple apps that I rely on. Um, yeah. Auto is one, PowerPoint add-in is another one, but it's been retired and I'm not happy about that. And I've been telling Microsoft that not everybody uses Microsoft 365. You can yeah. get the PowerPoint subtitle translator if you have 365, the, the paid version. Right. I couldn't find it in the free version. So the one I use is on PowerPoint on my computer, not 365, the cloud version. Right. And then I also use Google Slides, which has the same thing as PowerPoint, but it's usually, um, I have to use the browser. The thing I like about PowerPoint or the Google Slides is that it's a separate window that's easier to manage than mm -hmm. a tab from Google Slides. So right. those are the three I often find myself using. And whenever I have a choice for a video call, I tend to go with Google Meet okay. because the captions are built in the app. And you can see who is speaking. So it's easier when you only have to use one app and not two. One for the video call and one for the caption because God forbid, I just have to um, look at the doc or share my screen, then I have to rearrange everything again. Right. So Google Main has that advantage. And yes, Microsoft Teams has built-in caption too, but I find it very hard to set up Teams and share it with people. It's so focused on company than it is on individuals like Google Meet. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and one of the questions that Meryl and I talked about before is whether she uses ASL, so American Sign Language. And what's your preference, Meryl, for ASL? Oh, um, I grew up wrong. So I did not know sign language growing up. Mm -hmm. At the time when I was a child, it was either or. It wasn't mm -hmm. about. You mm -hmm. either get wrong or you do sign language. And typically, it was done at a residential school. So my parents wanted to keep me home. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> so, um, but seriously, um, I live in a place where there's not a lot of deaf people. Maybe mm -hmm. if I lived in Washington, D.C., they have a wonderful deaf community, and that would have been a different story. Yeah. But in reality, 99% uh, of the people I meet are not deaf or hard of hearing, nor do they know some language. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, sign language is a, it's a language. Just right. like Spanish, French, it, it's its own language. Right. And like with any language, it's very hard to learn and become fluent. Yeah. Because it really requires immersion. Mm -hmm. And so I have a friend who learned sign language. She's deaf. She learned sign language. She went to a residential school. And now she she knows words and phrases, but she doesn't know anything that she used to. Yeah. So if you don't talk, yeah. you forget yeah. it, right? Yeah, yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just like I forgot three years of Spanish I learned in high school. Yeah. So that's why I prefer not to learn sign language because I really don't have a lot of opportunity to use them. Right. And some people have been recommending if you want to interact with deaf people, learn sign language. <laughs> not that simple. It's like right. learning a whole language. Yeah. So it helps to learn a few words and maybe the finger out for that in case. Yeah. But you don't have to be fluent in the language. Right. Uh, so Meryl, for those of you who are listening um, or reading the captions uh, in the, what I say is in the future, because this video will be captioned on YouTube and that's primarily how Meryl will watch my videos. So it's an encouragement for you if you are doing videos on YouTube to use the caption software. Make sure you have that setting clicked because I think a lot of people don't even realize that that's a setting. So turn on your caption software so that people like Meryl can watch your videos and understand what you're saying. So when we were talking about having Meryl on the show, 
I was like, okay, I've got to brush up on my, on my sign language. I'm like, is this forget or is this remember? And I talked to Meryl and she's like, it doesn't matter because I don't know sign language and ASL. So I was like, okay, good. I'm off the hook. Um, things like, you know, how are you? Right. So those are things that I'll, I'll remember, but other things I'll forget. And she said, not everyone uses it, especially if you're in a hearing community, there's no opportunity to use that. So uh, what she talked about offline is just ask people. So if you run into someone who is deaf, just ask them, what's your preferred um, way of communicating? And she's nodding. So her lip reading is pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to try to pronounce things uh, uh, with my lips, Meryl. Hopefully we're doing well. Oh, I do have one more question for you before we jump over to Simon and then welcome Kat Von B. Um, how is this live captioning software that we were using in the beginning, how is that helping you? Like, is it helping you to hear what everyone's talking about? But this yeah, one? I am. Um, what I have in front of me, and you can't see my screen, is mm -hmm. I have the video on the top part of my screen, and then I have the caption right below it. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of lying on the reading, and my eyes kind of gravitate down where to the caption sometimes, depending where we are and what we're talking about. So it's just kind of a combination and you're very easy to lip read. So that okay. helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So it, um, some people are easier to lip read than others. And it's just, the harder it is, the more stressful it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then Laura, if you look at the comment here, she said that you taught her years ago to use uh, closed caption. So. Yay. You've taught oh, people to do it for years. <laughs> so that's fantastic. And I'm going to pull up the, I'm going to bring Simon in, um, Farhan as well. And also let's see, we're going to try to use the caption software. So as we're talking, I'm going to keep using the caption software. Um, and then Simon, tell us again, what we're using with this uh, live captioning software here. Sure. So what I am doing right now is I just open up otter.ai. So uh, just go to uh, https uh, colon slash slash otter.ai. And I just press the record button and then I click a present button. And so I just share this link to Deb. And what we're doing is we're just live transcribing directly from my laptop. Um, otter also comes in many, many flavors. Um, I'm holding it up on my phone. Uh, you can zoom into me later on. Uh, okay, so right now yeah. this is the iOS phone. I have a few uh, YouTube videos or Twitter videos showing how this is doing live transcribing. So you can use that when you are out and about shopping, masked up, and and be able to communicate, right? So you can just hold a phone. It, it works across a social distance of six feet, so you can communicate with people up, outside. Or you can use it on the desktop when you're doing virtual meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, furthermore, recently we have an integration with Zoom, so it will provide live transcription. So like Mero was saying earlier, currently it is off to the side and it opens up a, as a separate window. We're working on something that is a little bit more integrated coming soon, so stay tuned. Okay. Uh, Bill says he is amazed at how fast it is, and so am I. Um, I, the other thing too that I've always found challenging anytime I've gone into edit transcriptions is when I'm reverting to my Jersey accent or if I'm tired and I'm not really pronunciating my words. Um, but I've, I'm fascinated at how it'll transcribe it and then it figures out after you finish the sentence and then corrects it. Can you tell us a little bit about the technology of how that's happening? I'm My mind is blown to see your software, Otter. I've just been so impressed. Same, this is amazing and so much more accurate than the Google stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I, I'm very blessed to work with a very talented team of speech scientists and, and AI engineers. Uh, we have built our speech engine uh, engine from the ground up. Uh, uh, so we are not dependent on any third party speech API. So I have my platform team to thank for this, to be able to handle a variety of accents. Um, a variety of um, noise environment. So right now we are going through live streaming. But whether you're in person, in a conference room, in a coffee shop, having a, a startup pitch meeting of, of whatnot, or in a loud conference floor, um, 
it the product really just sells itself when i used to go into um, ces and demo it in a very loud noisy environment I hold up the phone and people are amazed how well Otter can handle uh, transcription in a variety of environments. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's basically our secret sauce. We're able to do live transcription in a very accurate manner. It self-corrects. So like Deb, you were saying earlier, the more that you can complete the sentence and Otter, you might notice that Otter may get it wrong initially, but it'll go back and correct itself. Yeah. So. By the time you finish a meeting, or by the time you finish an interview, or by the time you finish a webinar, you have a fairly good uh, and legible transcript that's very accurate, so it takes very light editing. And one more feature is that we also identify speakers. We do that after the fact. So after the recording is done, we go back and label who said what, so that we have a very clear transcript consisting of Deb, Simon, Merrill, and then Farhan, and Craig, and, and so on, and Kat later on. Everything is going to be labeled. Uh, we have a question, uh, Simon, one from Laura that says, it's a brilliant tool. Does it get smarter as it gets used to certain words that you use? Yeah, so we have a functionality right now called custom vocabulary. Uh, it's something that you can just cut and paste a list of jargon, acronyms, abbreviations, uh, technical terms. Um, any phrases that your organization use very frequently. Um, right before this live stream, I was just showing all the guests, I type in Meryl's name because I noticed I was getting it wrong initially. And so uh, so right now, uh, so Craig, Farhan, all of them are in there now. So yeah, you can see in the live transcript, it's getting most of the time correctly. Yeah. Uh, so this is custom vocabulary. Um, and, and it does learn over time. If you edit with an author, it will keep learning. Okay, so, so it's good to edit afterwards. Yes. Because then you're teaching it. Okay. Uh, yeah. you, go ahead. Sorry. I had one curious question. Um, are you working on an offline version by any chance? Uh, it's on the roadmap, yes. Very cool. This is super, super useful and just amazing. Um, and Farhan, I'm actually going um, to, I want to ask you because you're in Clubhouse. And when I first joined like a week ago, so I'm a fresh newbie. I don't know when, when you joined. And then I heard you talking about um, your product with Contra Labs. I'm like, okay, so Clubhouse is a complete audio app, right? Like just, it's kind of right. like a podcast, but it's a live podcast. Do you see something like this being integrated in Clubhouse so that people who are hard of hearing or deaf can participate oh, in yeah. Clubhouse? I think it's it's a necessary like it, it shouldn't clubhouse shouldn't exist without this kind of a feature because <laughs> the whole point of it is to invite uh, you know audiences and voices that are often lost in tech, right? Mm -hmm. um, Silicon Valley has this giant mission to change the world, but we can't be leaving behind uh, people and not having technology advances reach them. And that's kind of what we do at Concha Labs and why I believe so hard in this mission. Uh, I think the challenge that becomes with Clubhouse is that a lot of the conversation moves so fast and the rooms are kind of ad hoc. So you you know you can't really predict what topic is gonna happen. You don't know who's really jumping in. Sometimes there are people speaking different languages, they're playing music. And so you can't really predict what the audio is even gonna be. But yeah, for a large part, I think this should definitely exist. And I've had uh, people of, of deaf and hard of, hard of hearing community reach out to me uh, and ask if there are tools that uh, they can use alongside Clubhouse. Cause there are tons of the members that are there. And I know that they, they, can't, they can't participate as fully or as often as they'd like to, uh, but if they had something like this there, they totally would. Yeah, they could, yeah. Um, and I'm also going to bring in Kat Von B. She is involved with Otter and also Craig. We're gonna add all six of you to the screen. <laughs> oh, and I think, Craig, you might have uh, an echo. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, um, I, hopefully it's not there anymore. Oh, I thought that was a from that. I see what you're saying. Yeah, let me let me fix that. Your lips are matching now, though, so that's good. So I'm gonna mute his for a second, and then uh, Kat Von B, welcome, because we didn't get a chance to say hello to you. Hi, hello. Tell us what you do at Otter. I am Otter's social media manager, and um, yeah, it's a pleasure. I get to work with Simon every day and he beats me to everything. And I, yeah, it's, I love it. I mean, Otter is such a great product and it's really a pleasure to work with the community and just uh, learn a lot. I've learned an awful lot, you know, just working here for the last year. 
Mm. Um, so this, it's funny because I know Kat Von B <laughs> and that's how I'll, I will always refer to <laughs> as the traveling Greek because I met her in Greece uh, when yep. I was working with a travel blogging agency. Um, so I always think of you as my traveling friend, Kat. <laughs> yes, exactly. We have memories in Greece. Yes. Now tell us, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. You know, you're involved with social media, anything about Otter that you want to share that Simon uh, may not have covered yet, or maybe a little bit about Simon that we don't know that we should. <laughs> yeah. Simon's passion for the product is evident. I mean, it doesn't matter. If somebody messages at 2 AM or 5 AM he'll answer. And I think that's really great in a product manager because I've worked for a lot of tech companies. I, I do social media for tech. And I've never worked with anyone that is as passionate about a product. So it's really a pleasure. And he's, his dedication to accessibility and making everything inclusive is, is really, um, has been really eye-opening for me because I never really thought about inclusion so much in video. Mm. But now I'm very aware. I, I don't mm. know why I didn't think about it. I didn't. But And I feel like a lot of people... It, it just doesn't, it's not that, you know, we don't care. It's just that you don't think about it as much, but it's really made me very hyper aware. And so now when I see a video without captions, I'm annoyed, mm. you know, and I, I, I just, yeah, I, there is really no reason in this day and age to not have, you know, access for everyone. Right. Right. Oh, and by the way, our, our other Greek friend for travel blogging, Friend Adrian is saying, OMG, it's Kat. And she is wondering <laughs> how you're doing. So we thought oh. I'd pull that up as well. <laughs> um, That's so, funny. Tell her I said hi. <laughs> so Simon, um, tell us a little bit more about the app. And then I, I want to pull Craig in. I think he's back in. Uh, we also have someone that's asking uh, a question about your app that you might be able to help with. So Marshall Silver, hello, aloha. He's asking how you price it if someone's using it for a live virtual seminar event. So Marshall's run in-person events, and that's one of the challenges that we're looking at, right? Where Meryl is all of a sudden, as a deaf person, immersed in everything Zoom, everything happening online. So Otter is able to transcribe that. Um, Marshall did all of his events in person, and now he's doing things virtually. So what are ways that you can work with people that have large events like Tony Robbins one, runs these large events. So does Marshall, he's going to do an online event. So if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, hi, Marshall. Uh, very, very nice to meet you. So to answer your question for virtual events and for live events, we have a package called Otter for Teams. Uh, so for smaller events, if you can handle just reading the blog post that I put out and with all the instructions and set up everything, um, it's um, Otter for Teams is available at $240 per user per year or $30 per user per month. So one user per Zoom account. Uh, if you're using Zoom, uh, if you're using other technology, uh, send us an email at sales at audit.ai and we can work with you. Uh, for a more white glove service where we take care of everything for you, once again, you can talk to our sales team and we can provide you a quote. Um, for other, you know, so so er, my, the earlier point, the Otter for Teams package is really enabling a lot of the, you know, whether you're a personal coach or you are a uh, social media influencer and you're live speakers and you give talks uh, all the time on all types of streaming platform, I uh, highly recommend checking us out. Um, so just go to otter.ai slash teams or otter.ai slash Zoom to read all about it um, and you can try out a live demo. Um, we also have a video demo that Kat and I did a while, a while back that you can watch as well. Um, but one more thing I just want to add uh, to an earlier point that Deb uh, was bringing up. I think the year 2020 is like really bringing us all together. I, you know, even though the, you know, despite the, the difficult situation of the pandemic, but it really forces everybody to adopt technology. Schools are adopting technology to use remote, um, you know, using these remote virtual uh, virtual meeting tools. Um, I, I find myself more open to take a call, uh, do a live interview like this, right? Um, and so, but then it also means that now people are more willing to adopt technology that really everybody should have been adopting anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I was very pleased to hear that Meryl is so techy, like she, she has no preference. She would try every tool and you know whatever the right 
um, the right application, the right moment, she will pull and use the right tool. So I think that's a great attitude about it. Um, and it also drives more awareness. So for myself, I was already aware that there is a deaf and hard of hearing community that really want to use the other tool. But because of the pandemic situation, I feel an extra level. It really tipped the scale to make me feel that I want to contribute. I want to help the, uh, help out, um, whether it is deaf and hard of hearing or learning differences, any type of learning disabilities. Um, um, English as a second language. We have people in Japan that keeps um, tweeting us and saying, oh, wow, thank you for making this application. It really helps me learn English or helps me pronoun uh, pronounce English more accurately. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, there, there's just countless use cases. So I, 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 it's very heartwarming to find these user testimonials and I, I feel really motivated to help. Yeah. And, and I and I know Meryl and I have had a lot of side conversations and uh, she said she's been talking to you about some of these things and how, how it can be better and you've been so receptive. So I love this. And I love that Meryl, her name is sometimes Maryland, Marrow. What do we have? We have so many names for you, Meryl. Meryl, Meryl, Meryl. There, I'm training the Otter oh, app yeah. there. <laughs> when I make video and YouTube automatically capturing them, it never, ever gets my name right. Not even my <laughs> name, it's very simple. Uh, and then Marshall uh, said, first of all, uh, Simon, nice haircut. If you notice Marshall, he has a similar haircut. Um, but he's, <laughs> he's also wondering, if, if does it matter how many people are in the audience? And I don't know if he's talking price or just in general. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So that's another differentiation of Otter. If you try out any sort of live captioning, you quickly you're going to find that Otter is the best in market because it has been optimized for multi-person conversations. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And just to speak a little bit about my use of it um, and part of why I wanted Simon on and I was talking to Kat Von B, uh, she interviewed me recently about Otter and I'm like, I'm diving into it and I'm using it, but I feel like there's so many more things just like you were showing me this live use of it, this live captioning and I'm so impressed with how it works. And those of you watching the show or watching the captions after in the future, you can go to otter.ai and they, you guys have a free subscription that is it up to 600 minutes that you can transcribe anything? That's correct, up to 600 minutes, so that's 10 hours per month. Yeah. Uh, so use it for your on online meetings, use it to take notes. If you're a student, use it to take mm -hmm. notes for your online classes. If you're a journalist, you already record on your um, on your digital device, um, mm -hmm. go ahead and record with Otter as well. Why? Because Otter can live transcribe so that if you hear a very interesting quote that you want to jot it down, instead of writing it down, just single tap and it will highlight in the live transcript. So that, yeah. makes, that makes it really easy to come back to pull all the quotes so that you can instantly write that article. So it really saves you time. Yes. Um, there are just so many use cases. We have people saying that I want Otter in my shower or right next to my <laughs> shower so that uh, when, as I'm showering, I can talk and speak my ideas. Or when I'm <laughs> driving and commuting, uh, I want to be able to talk. Or when I'm listening to podcasts, I want to take notes. Mm. The use cases are countless. Yes, I, I like the shower idea. And, and, and I feel like eventually that's going to happen. That's kind of what they're talking about, right? We just say, I want Uber and all of a sudden Uber's there, but we're speaking to it. So that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but I love this. I want to keep talking more about Otter. I do want to pop over to Craig. It looks like we've got him in the str stream. So I'm going to add him to the stream. Let's see. Um, and I'm going to give you full full screen here because I love your set, Craig. It's beautiful. You're super crisp. And let's Thank see if you. your lap, your, your lips match your words now. I think, Welcome. I think they do. Yes. Yay. <laughs> yay. Uh, so I want to introduce Craig. I want him to talk a little bit about Clipscribe. Um, and I signed up as an affiliate, but I'm not even giving my affiliate uh, account here because I'm su again, super fan of what you've created. Uh, and Craig and I met, I think online, geez, back in January, maybe, or December of last year, I started yeah. using this. I'm like, do you realize what you've created? You have saved me so much time in the video editing bay for client videos because your stuff does it. And the difference between otter.ai, which is really a captioning software, it transcribes things, it transcribes things real time. Clipscribe is something that you can use after the fact 
to capture attention. So those of you um, who create videos and maybe your market isn't to the deaf community, although I think you're missing out on a big market, by the way, um, highly educated, highly intelligent, uh, highly affluent community. So if that doesn't motivate you to reach people with your message, I hope I motivate you to do that. But the other thing what we're finding is no matter what people that are hearing, they have their their uh, um, mobile phone on mute because either they're in a meeting or they're just waking up in bed and they don't want to wake somebody else up. So they're scrolling through your content, but they can't hear it. So they're in the same position as Merrill. And if you can't hear something, if you're not interested, you're just going to scroll on by. Whereas Craig's software solves that and more. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And I will pull up the transcription software here as well, Craig, so that Merrill can hear us as well. Yeah. Yeah. So Clipscribe is, you know, just like you said, you're scrolling through the feed and, and that is really the sweet spot for Clipscribe is the social media feed. A lot of people don't know, somewhere upwards of 80, 85% of social media videos are watched without the sound on. You know, we're all sitting there on our phones, we're scrolling through wherever we're at, we're out at an appointment or, or you know, we're just in a classroom or something, don't wanna have the volume on. So it is imperative to have that text on the screen and what Clipscribe is specifically focused on is stopping that scroll. It's grabbing the attention of that person that's just kind of flying through the feed and getting their attention. And yeah. so, you know, I have, I have people ask me, you know, well, I want to, I want to do a transcription with Clipscribe. I want to upload a really long video and transcribe it. And generally what I actually tell them is it may not be the best tool for that. You may want to use a tool like Otter, or you may want to use, you know, some of the social platform built in transcription because Clipscribe is specifically focused for that attention grabbing uh, factor and, and to draw people into your video. So you can add a headline on the top of your video. You can obviously have your subtitles with, a ton of different fonts that you can use. You can have an animated countdown uh, on the video logos, images that come in at timed points. And the reason that I, you know, I created Clipscribe is because I've been a video, uh, I've had, this is my third company that's related to video in some way. I had a production company, I had a stock media website, and so I've done all the video stuff and I, you know, I can do After Effects, I can do Adobe Premiere, but I found myself doing this, you know, making these subtitle videos uh, and it was very frustrating and it was taking me a long time and I thought there's got to be an easier way to do this and that's kind of where Clipscribe came from so that even if you can do all the video editing or even if you can't, you can create a really potent, you know, attention grabbing video in minutes, uh, n you know, not within hours. So right. that's really the goal of it. Yeah, I love it. I love the product. Um, and then I've even given access to my clients. Uh, just here's my account, go ahead mm -hmm. and, and edit things or change things up. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that's really cool, I think you showed me the last time we met is that it almost becomes a video editing tool that yeah. you can take out some of the ums or yeah. take out the blank space. Uh, do you want to do you want to show anything at, at all right now, or or is that going to well, be too complex? I don't have it queued up, but I'll just kind of explain that a little bit. So, okay. again, you know, let's take a live stream for example. You're doing a, you're doing a live stream video, and you know, if it was me, I would be using some software where I could also record that to my hard drive, and then you can upload that to Clipscribe. And what you can do from there is, is just very quickly create short little videos uh, mm -hmm. from that longer video to use to drive people in to your longer videos. You know, that, that that's again, and the, kind of going back to what I say to folks that want to do longer uh, videos, I tell them, look, if somebody's watching your 45 minute video, you already have their attention. You know, mm, Clipscribe, yes. you probably don't need to use Clipscribe for that. 
definitely have transcription on there, but you've got their attention. So use Clipscribe to create some little short, you know, two, three minute videos uh, that you can put all over the place and drive people in to your long form uh, content. So you can really easily do that because with Clipstripe, you're, you're really editing video based on what you're saying, not mm -hmm. based on what you're seeing. You know, you don't mm -hmm. have to keep hitting play, play, listen to it, cut it. You have to do all that with a traditional video editor, but you can literally say, okay, I want to say this, I want to say mm -hmm. this, I don't want to say this. Or, or like you said, you could, you could click a button and remove every blank spot in your entire video yes. just with one click of your button, which that is... Yeah. That's pretty awesome, you know, just being able to do that because that would take you potentially hours if you, you know, had to do that manually. Yeah, I think your product, Clipscribe and Otter.ai are two of my favorite tools. And I think you're both mentioned in the first video I did, although I, I may have met you after that. But hmm. um, I did one of my first videos for my new YouTube channel. And I talked about otter.ai and I think I talked about Clipscribe, although that might have been the second video. And what's fascinating to me is search. So what I don't think a lot of people realize and why you do want to transcribe your videos and get them captioned is that they're being transcribed by Google and then found in search. So mm. Simon actually retweeted my YouTube video because I mentioned otter. I didn't I didn't keyword it. I don't know why I should have. Mm -hmm. I didn't put it in the keywords in YouTube. I didn't put it in the description. I didn't put it in the title. He found my video because I said otter.ai. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to add you to the screen as well, Simon. So is that is that right? Like, do you track things that just say your brand name? Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I think that's that's a great point. Uh, part for for any content producers, podcasters, YouTubers. Right, video producers. Uh, if you have anybody that has any content, um, the reason for captioning or the reason for transcribing is not only providing accessibility, but there's a benefit to you too, is to basically reach a larger audience because now your content is indexed and searchable and crawlable by Google so that it will drive more traffic to your content. Yeah. Um, and furthermore, another reason for that is you can repurpose the content. Right. So maybe your primary channel is podcasting, but then you also want to put out a blog post or mm -hmm. your primary channel is YouTube and you want to put out a podcast. So mm -hmm. the, the once again, the use cases are limitless. Yes, yes. And I think that that Craig and I have talked about that as well, where now that you've got the transcribe and I think there's even a button now that you get you get a blog post. So now mm -hmm. we start repurposing and you're getting found more online. And that's the goal. If you're a content creator, you're getting found more online. We do have a question from the audience. Uh, Alyssa Miller asks, Craig, I can uh, I can see using Clipscribe as a way to create clip videos of recorded usability tests. Yeah. Is that your friend? Is that your friend? Sister. 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 Oh, gee, I'm trying to think of the sign for sister, no. but I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember. Sister, what? What sister? What sister? I have to know now. <laughs> that sister, she spelled it out. <laughs> uh, so, Craig, go ahead. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a there's just a ton of ways that you can use it. Um, and and that's one great example. So yeah, you definitely do that. Awesome, awesome, cool. Um, and yeah, we had a, a, a recognized person there. So now I'm gonna bring on Farhan because I want to talk a little bit about something that's unique and it's software, right? It's software that you've created, Farhan. Tell us a so, little bit about Concha Labs. Yeah, so uh, we're prim primarily a software company. Um, targeting uh, detection of hearing loss. That's how we kind of started. And uh, the founder and CEO, is, her name is Amy Lee. Uh, she's a Berkeley undergrad with uh, Stanford masters uh, who, is, uh, who is who suffers hearing loss at a very acute level. And she went out of her way all through her life kind of making these small models of, of hearing aids, like literal hearing aids, and like starting from scratch, doing the soldering, doing all that stuff. Um, and trying to improve on, on what the current hearing aid market offers. Um, and a large part of what she found was it's not the limitation of, of the hardware, it's really 
um, just entrenched players kind of putting a huge price tag on it uh, and not and kind of stifling innovation, which is the story that we saw with smartphones and things like that. Uh, and so we're, we're a youngish company coming out of stealth this year. Uh, we launched at CES in January and uh, we've kind of launched into a, an open beta where we're inviting people in the Bay Area to come test out our hardware, but really test out our software, which um, is a quick test, kind of like a fun game uh, in the form of an iOS app, uh, which you take and then walk through. Here's, and it gives you kind of a general idea of how much hearing loss you have and then kind of what areas. And thanks to thanks to COVID and, and the FDA being overwhelmed with stuff, uh, they're not really approving new hearing aids now. So we've, we've been told to call these hearing pods. Hmm. But uh, I'll save you guys that and just call them hearing aids. So hearing um, pods, hearing pods. Hearing pods, yeah. Hearing yeah. Pods. Is, that, is uh, that because of a technical thing that you can't say hearing aid if it's not been approved? Exactly, yeah. Uh, FDA needs to approve it um, to it. be able to call it hearing, pods, uh, hearing aids. Uh, and the, the sad part of that is that this March, actually, Congress had a bill on the floor uh, to declassify hearing aids uh, as medical devices. So they were supposed to be able to so be sold over the counter. Mm. And that was our intention to, you know, have them in every Target, Walmart, uh, Safeway, whatever. Wow. But uh, right now, so, but, you know, in our beta, we kind of realized that people don't even want to go to the store to buy these. They don't even want to go to a doctor or an audiologist to be diagnosed. They just want everything at home. Yes. Um, yes. And so what we've done is kind of made this app uh, integrated with our online platform where you order the device, but through the phone, if, even if you just don't want to buy the device and you want to improve your hearing and over time kind of track it and see whether it's going up or going down, uh, you could keep taking this test over 30, 40 day period. You get a very good idea of uh, what frequency buckets do you kind of have hearing loss in and whether or not uh, our hearing aid will help you because we generally target uh, lower to mid range hearing loss. Mm -hmm. For the extreme hearing loss case, you would have to get a a very special type of hearing aid. Uh, and we've kind of tried to make it a, a general solution for most people, but really what we want to do is tackle it through software. So yeah. what we try to do is basically reduce the need for the person with hearing loss to have like changed their profile. This seems to be the biggest complaint uh, with mm. uh, hearing aid users is that, yeah, sure, it works fine you know, at the doctor's office or when they come home and they're in just quiet environments. But if they're an active person who is switching from a quick office meeting to a loud restaurant, to, you know, going back home on, uh, in a loud car or something, mm. uh, it fails. And they'd have to go in the app and like reset it and like do all those things. So we're trying to reduce that and have it be a completely seamless approach where, OK, once you paired it with your phone, that's it. You know, you get mm. calling, Siri, all of that stuff integrated. But then you also don't have to go in and change profiles and like recalibrate it every time you change your environment. Uh, and that's the real problem we're trying to solve is to make these as seamless as possible and then over time uh, add better tracking for even health related stuff. You know, uh, we could have a heart rate tracker in there mm. and things like that. So, so th this is where I look at tech and and how it advances people to communicate. And that's what mm. you've created. And that, I think, is what triggered me to really pay attention when you were talking in Clubhouse on Monday in the wellness room, how it's the software you're focusing on. Because if you can tweak the software in the app and someone has the app, they're able to hear better or in different environments. So uh, the other thing too, uh, Meryl was talking about, uh, so some of the apps, right? Like Simon, we were talking earlier about, we can, we can use these apps to transcribe things in meetings, but the preference is face-to-face -face dialogue. So the masks yeah. are a huge hindrance, um, even like, old hearing aids used to be these clunky things and yeah. you've created something that's very it's sexy right can you show us one do you have i do yeah i have one a pair right here in fact i should probably have worn them and done the call uh kind of with them but these are our latest model uh i think you can see it yeah exactly <laughs> and so we we had a very similar one we tried to get it as thin form factor as we could uh, and they come hide in, behind. Yeah, they come in left and right, so they're very clear, marked with colors, so you know which is which. Uh, but also, most people we found generally only have hearing loss in one side of the ear, and we're targeting a, a, initially at least uh, age-related hearing loss. People who uh, I know in their early 40s or, or early 50s, they're starting to realize that you know something's wrong. 
right. they don't have to, they have too much ego to go to the audiologist mm -hmm. and say hey something's wrong right uh, and they shouldn't have to even right because they know that if they go to the aud audiologist they're going to get ripped off most of the time yeah because uh, they don't themselves have too much knowledge of it so it's a, it's a two-pronged problem where we're trying to replace the entire industry pipeline of like mm -hmm. people going through this cumbersome process and instead have it directly to the customer through their phone, they can just order it. Yeah. Uh, and the second part is education. We, we spend a lot of time on your cleaning, your maintenance, healthy listening volumes. Um, we, in fact, if you do use the app and, and you connect your, your device straight to your iPhone, it doesn't even really pair to our app. You're pairing it to iOS itself. Mm. So you get all the benefits of having, say, wearing AirPods, really. Right. And so right. it becomes a super seamless connection. Yeah. Uh, something we're working on lately, which is we found uh, a lot of fun, is um, using your phone mic, which is always on for Siri, uh, to get real-world notifications. So uh, somebody with with a hearing loss in like seven to eight thousand hertz couldn't hear a police siren because mm. those tend to be a, a, that, that frequency. And so using our thing, they'll get a push notification say, "Hey, there's a siren. Don't cross the street," or something like that. Mm. And uh, the other thing we're able to do and, and kind of what the software, the, the secret sauce of it is the way it works is most people, when they when they communicate in English, they generally speak between 500 to 2000 hertz for males uh, and at a higher frequency range of 3000 to 4000 for females. And what we're able to do is see, OK, where do you have the gap? But then how do we take that the, the sound that comes in that gap at those frequencies, translate it and then modulate down to a frequency that you can hear without losing that person's, you know, intonation and, and style of speaking. Right. Because a lot of times it can tend to, you know, a male voice can be translated to sound like something else and become hearable, but then it doesn't sound like a guy anymore. Right. Or you take a, a girl's voice and you modulate it, it doesn't sound like a girl anymore. So that's kind that's of what our, our software solves. And uh, uh, you can and buy the device right now. Uh, we're not selling them directly. We're trying, we're getting people into our beta and signing up to a, a subscription type service where they know that this is this hardware is not the final form factor, uh, and we're we're constantly iterating on it. But if you join the beta and subscribe to become part of the subscription service, you're guaranteed the latest hardware and the latest software all throughout. So that's kind of the model we're taking. Is there a website that they can sign up for beta? I'm totally going to drop the link uh, okay, right perfect. here. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a there's a sign up uh, early sign up thing. But if you do send me an email at Orhan at Concha Labs and say that you're friends with Deb, I will get you fast track through that process. Perfect. All right, we've got that. Uh, and I actually would love Amy, who's our CEO, to come on here and talk more in depth of her story and how kind of what inspired her, because it's really that's what drives me every day is that this is a really tough technical problem. And she's one of the few people, and this isn't a classic Silicon Valley company where you can just come in right. and disrupt things. The hearing is a super subjective issue which affects everyone differently. You know, two people with the same spectrogram or same audiogram, they experience that that loss of hearing very differently. Right. And right. Um, so we work individually with people to make sure that whatever they're using from us is calibrated to them. Uh, and then over time, we're trying, we're building machine learning models which can do it automatically. So that's kind of uh, our goal. Yeah, so this is fascinating. I love this software component. The other thing that I'm loving, I'm like geeking out on the tech today <laughs> because I'm watching this, Simon, and I'm watching Otter learn. As he was saying, audiologist, it was some other uh, doctor. And then all of a sudden it learned audiologist. So that was really cool watching Otter in this live transcription work. So it, it I think... What we, we all need to realize is that in the beginning stage of tech, there's always going to be beta stages and glitches. Um, and, you know, Meryl and I were talking earlier. It's like, these are great, but, you know, there's 80%. And those of you watching the transcription as you're hearing, you're seeing the difference. So you're seeing some of the struggle, right? You're seeing some of the struggle that Meryl and other people who are deaf and hard of hearing go through when there's communication gaps, like things are mm -hmm. missing. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about um, real briefly with Meryl is about masks. And we're I'm trying to look for a mask. I'm going to use a, you know, how, <laughs> how do you communicate, Meryl, in real life when you're trying to get groceries or you need something? How are you communicating? Because I want you to share your struggle and what the deal is. Like, I, I just remember in March or April and all of a sudden, 
masks were becoming a mandate in places. And I, I my heart was like, this just became an extremely silent world for a lot of people. So talk a little bit about um, what, how the world sounds to you right now and how do you communicate in a world of masks? Well, um, I know I'm not alone because I talk to other deaf people and they're mm -hmm. the same. A lot of us get anxiety. We don't like to go out there, but I call mask world because mm -hmm. imagine you go out Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you hear them just shut up. Mm -hmm. That's how it is for us in mask world because everybody's mouth is covered and it shuts up my ability to listen to you and what you have to say. Mm -hmm. So, and I know the rock field mask. The problem is there are so many brands out there, it's unbelievable. And they don't all want, I, I know for a fact that some are terrible. Um, for example, I saw one and I knew it would not work. It, it had a clear screen about that big. See, you could see my mouth goes up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so you have the fogging problem. Some have mm. fogging problem. Right. Some have not a big enough window. The window can have a glare, and when there's a glare, you can't see the person's mouth. Right. When you're deaf, you learn all about lighting and glare. If right. I had my lamp behind me, you would have a hard time seeing me. Right. So I learned about the stuff growing up. Mm. And then the other issue is most lip readers, especially ones like me who depend heavily on it, we don't just look at the lips. We look at the whole face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I know there is one that has a completely clear but I don't know how it looks when you talk. Right. So many of the apps, the clear maps, show a picture. They're missing an opportunity. They need to show a video of people talking right. with the masks on. And the problem is they're expensive. Often the one time only. You mm -hmm. can't wear them over and over like most masks. Yeah. So that, and so that's not affordable, especially for businesses. Small businesses. So, and the second problem is which one works? And I know that not all of them tested with the problem is okay, if you ask 10 people who are deaf or hard of hearing a question or a problem, like you're going to get the eight different answers. Right. We, people need to understand we are just as diverse as the world. Yeah. So I know somebody who has hearing aids, but he is able to listen to conversation in the next room. So mm. for him, a clear max pretty much will work mm -hmm. 75% of the time, most likely. But mm -hmm. for me, that's not the, the case. So it just depends. What do you do to talk uh, when you're buying stuff? Okay. So first of all, I keep it simple. I stay home. I keep going well. <laughs> That's the easiest thing to do. But I know that I'm very lucky. I have family that live with me, and they can go out and do the grocery shopping and whatnot. Right. And secondly, um, I play tennis once a week with a friend, and we show up wearing masks because we're in Texas without a mandate. Mm -hmm. And she would tell them our name, and they would tell her the court number, and then off we go, no problem. Mm -hmm. But in most, in most case, oh, I went to a store once um, because I needed to renew my passport, for, uh, my passport. And so I went to the drug store, and thankfully, I never had to mention to him anything. We both mm -hmm. had masks on. I could follow his hair motion. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just a picture, and then I paid for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was step up. Right. But when I had to go to my doctor, he's in the hospital building. Mm. So you're, you're dealing with a lot more people, a lot right. more diversity, pregnant people, sick people, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I had to go twice a week apart. The first time was to do blood work, and then the second time was the appointment. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I know we have to go in one entrance. Everybody goes in one entrance. 
And then um, the first thing they did was take my temperature. Okay, no problem. And then they put it to the hand sanitizer. Great. <laughs> no problem. And then I'm walking up further and then they start talking. I, I can hear them talking, but I have no idea what they're saying. Mm. But then I'm deaf, I'm lip read, I cannot lip. I, I am not stupid girl. I don't have x ray vision. And I can't <laughs> read lip read. <laughs> so um, finally, I figured it out. They wanted to know where I was going and why. And I told them, stop. No problem. Next week, I come back expecting the same thing, and I'm ready. <laughs> nope. They changed it on me. They <laughs> changed the process. If they did things out of order, and um, uh, anyway. Yeah. So my advice to businesses is to create a process, post it on the door, or post it on your website. Now, wherever there's any kind of communication, if you email people, not the most process, because mm -hmm. I had to go to the dentist a few weeks ago. And I was dreading this day for so long. So I knew that you had to call when you um, showed up in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I emailed them out that this is not going to work for me, obviously. Mm -hmm. and they said, you can text. And I said, great. But when I got there, they had a sign that said, call, stay in your car, call ahead. Yeah. I wish they would change the sign to say call or text. text. Because not everybody's going to have the first sight, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's one endeavor. And then I have a friend who's deaf. She was picking up a cake at a bakery. And they said, stay in the car and call when you get here. Well, so she gets there and she can't exactly call it either. So she did what I would never do because I am not that courageous. She mm -hmm. honked the horn. <laughs> this is a shopping center. So I don't really want everybody giving me that look. Yeah. When you honk the horn, it's never a good look. <laughs> so I am my own help for that. Yeah. And then another thing you said is that in certain circumstances when you're communicating, you just stay six feet apart and you right. take the masks off to just communicate. So, and, and I wanted you to share your story and thank you for coming on the show. I know you're a little nervous, but it was not pain, it was pain free, right? Easy. Yeah, well, why easy. Is thank you to um, Simon and Otto for, for making it easier and the chat box and seeing yeah. familiar faces. So, um, oh, you were talking about other options. That the important thing with um, death and hard of hearing people uh, to be proactive as possible. Mm -hmm. Offer options. So some might prefer That's you write it answer. down. Some might prefer you can type it. Yep. Some might prefer you uh, email. Always, yep. always, every business should always have at least two, two contact options. Yeah. And I'm not talking two phone numbers. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. a phone number and uh, email yeah. or chat. Whatever was possible. Oh, so one of the I had one, oh, one, when I went to the doctor, um, I told them up front when I checked in, I'm deaf, I can't look, blah, 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 blah. And I went to sit down. Then they called me up, but they waved on me. So I went up. She handed me something. Well, she handed me with a note and a clipboard. The note that fell off the paperwork. Simple. Yeah. And people. Officers can have whiteboards so you can erase. And I wish they would have a whiteboard when you call people's names. You could write the last name of someone's mm -hmm. board. Yeah. Things like that. Just yeah. offer options. That's really important. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> and that for everyone is deaf clapping. So anytime you're at an event and people go, yeah, that's giving the person at the, the stage the applause. Uh, so thank you. And thank you for sharing your experience with everyone. So remember, if you are, are a small business owner, think about what Meryl says, offer options. And one of the things she was saying is sometimes it's just like tech. So again, like Simon was showing us this cool transcription and it's awesome. We were using it. I'm going to pull it up in a minute. But sometimes the tech breaks or there's no good, the, the Wi-Fi is not good. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that too as we wrap up. But the other thing is just sometimes it's just good old fashioned taking notes, right, on a post-it note and and sharing that with people. So we have Farhan who has created a uh, Concha Lab. So it's basically 
the hearing aid and the software to help deaf people and hard of hearing hear better. We have Simon Lau from otter.ai who's created an amazing transcription software and also what we've been using. And I'll pull this up in a second. Uh, actually, I'll pull it up right now. Uh, we've got live transcription software. This was awesome. And the way we did it for people who are asking is Simon sent me a link uh, I, I was able to put it over here, but then he then just shared his screen. So it's running off of his computer as though it's someone showing up. So this would be like someone talking verbally, except it's words. Uh, so this is otter.ai as far as how that works. And then we have, let's see, we have, I'm going all the way around the room. We have Craig Lillard from Clipscribe that helps you reach more people where once you have the video, like for instance, this video afterwards, I can take two minute and five minute clips, upload it to his software, Clipscribe, and then it turns it into a uh, movable transcription, but also has things like a timer to show you, hey, you only have two minutes to watch this. So those of you who are watching, we shared some of the stats that don't watch your screen and your uh, social media feed with the audio on, Clipscribe helps with that. And also graphics, he's got some cool graphics. And then we also have Kat Von B from otter.ai. She's the whole social media manager. And it's funny because Simon and Kat, every once in a while, Kat would text me from Otter and I'm thinking I'm talking to Simon. And I think we had like a meeting set for last week. I was like, oh, this is for Kat, not, not uh, Simon. So thanks for being patient and uh, figuring out who was who. I just want uh, to go around the room. One final statement of something maybe that you wanted to share that we have so many people here, uh, share one final statement. We'll start with you, uh, Simon. Well, so Deb, thanks again for inviting me. So again, Audit.ai, we are a small startup in Silicon Valley. We transcribe meetings, interviews, lectures, and we look forward to uh, applying the technology to all types of use cases, in, uh, in, including accessibility, including uh, turning things into more uh, accessible content, uh, whether it's live or after the fact. So thank you, everyone. I, I love it. And Kat Bombi, we'll go to you next since you're his partner in crime. And I love what, so Kat has been talking about you, Simon, and I love what she's been sharing, how you created this and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, this accessibility thing, like this is reaching more people. This is a tool that is giving people more freedom and more access to information. So I love that. And thanks for sharing the inside scoop about uh, Simon Kat Von B. Anything oh. to add as we wrap up? Well, um, for me, the, the tool has been really helpful because I'm a blogger, as you know, and I can verbalize my thoughts and put them, uh, just verbalize my thoughts and turn on Otter. Otter transcribes it, and then I can go ahead and export my thoughts and create a post, which for me, I had perpetual writer's block forever, my whole entire <laughs> life. So it's really made a difference. So it, it could be very helpful in that respect as well. I love that you brought that up um, because that's a huge, um, piece of innovation, right? For people who are writers and bloggers. So that's another use of uh, otter.ai, Simon. I love it. I love it. I'm going to bring Farhan on and uh, tell us, remind us where we can go for people who want to sign up. Yeah, conchalabs.com, uh, same as my as the spelling in my name here. Uh, and you should be able to scroll all the way to the bottom and, and sign up. Um, if you do want me to fast track you through that process, you could email me at Farhan at conchalabs.com. Drop that email again here. Uh, but my PXA is just for people to clean their ears. Uh, you would be surprised how uh, <laughs> how many people don't maintain and clean their ears and then take care of the really important thing. Your ears are not just for hearing. They're also take care of your balance and, and, and how you walk and, and stuff like that. So it's really important. I, I think a lot of hearing people started realizing how they are having some hearing loss now that masks have been introduced. I had a friend oh. who's saying, I can't hear people talk. So, yeah. yeah. We as humans are almost, uh, you know, we don't realize it, but we, every, all of us lip read at, at some point. Yes. Uh, I've noticed that myself. I'm like, I can't see what you're saying. I literally <laughs> find myself saying that. Um, um, and, and I didn't realize how much I was depending on lip reading. And I'm like, what, what, what? And I feel like <laughs> I'm hearing them, but it's muffled and I'm not hearing them. 
Um, so yeah, that is fascinating. So I love what you've created and I'm really glad to have met you in Clubhouse. Likewise, thank you so yeah. much. I'm happy to be on and I'd love for uh, my team members to also be on here and talk more about that stuff. Definitely, we'll, we'll be bringing you on as another guest uh, or as a regular guest, so thank you. Cool. And Craig, cool. clip yes. spread. Yeah. Deb, thanks for having <laughs> me on. You're, you're super groovy and uh, it's fun being on here with you guys, Simon and Kat. Uh, Really impressed with Otter, especially uh, what we saw today. So very, very good job to you guys. Um, Clipscribe, yeah, if you're making video content, you're wanting to make video content, and you don't want it to get lost in the feed, that's what Clipscribe is all about. So uh, go to clipscribe.com and check it out. Love it. So I'm going to say a great big aloha, and we'll give everyone a deaf clap here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.